Well, here we are back in the workshop. It's a cold winter day. We managed to run the heaters out here for hours, trying to get me warmed up enough to where I can actually work on something. So, anyways, today we're going to uh, go on advisement of the last video where they, uh, where I had built the uh, tic-tac-toe board, uh, and also I had built a checkerboard. I didn't put that project out. Sorry about that. But uh, my suggestions were we need to make a backgammon board. So here we are saying, hmm, what do we do with a backgammon board? So I had to go and find my old backgammon board and look at it. So, because I didn't remember how to even play it. So we're going to have to try to figure out that to start out with. So anyways, this is what I'm going to have to go with, I guess, for uh, my pattern. This is it. So we're going to try to do something with this. So it looks like I'm going to need a background color, uh, some different color here. So really basically three colors at minimum within the thing. Uh, I think I will have to make some of these little pucks. Uh, we'll need to get a couple of dice in here. I don't even remember what the big dice is for. Uh, so we'll have two colors of those. So I think this is going to be a project probably, I don't know. I'm going to have to think on this a little bit. What do I want to use for wood? How do I want to place this in here? How close do I make it like this? And hmm, decisions, decisions. Well, I think I've decided what I want to try. Maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. Anyways, we did do a little bit of drawing, drafting, and uh, this is what I'm thinking we're going to need on my little draft board here. I don't know if you can see that really well. Looks like we're going to need uh, 12 dark triangles, 12 light triangles. We need about 15 chips, two colors. I think I want to make the board approximately 10 inches by 12 inches. This is not really a gotta have. Uh, that'll leave us about an inch and a quarter, I figure, width on each one of these and probably about five and a quarter inches long. We've got to do that twice so that we can hinge it together and then we'll add a little space here. So with the inch and a quarter and five inch, and I think probably the easiest way I've come up with to do this is going to be simply take some of my paneling and uh, we're going to cut it about five inches long or maybe a little bit extra just to give me some extra on it. And we'll take the paneling and cut it into the diamonds and we'll stain them two different colors or one, maybe leave one natural and then stain the other one. So I think what we're going to do is come over here and just set up on the saw and uh, I'm going to cut a small piece of paneling that I've got. We're going to go ahead and cut this into that five inch or a little bit better piece and then we'll uh, get several of them out of this little piece here. I think I could probably get enough diamonds out of it and then we'll uh, set up on the table saw and see how we can cut them up. We'll show you that set up in a minute. <laughs> Okay, I've set this up on my table saw. I think this will work all right. I've kind of done a little bit of playing around with it. What we ended up with is about a seven degree angle off of the 90 on this. And I've set this up and I put my table saw uh, fence here. We've put a block on here. And that block is exactly an inch and a quarter from here to the face of that tooth. So that's gonna give us our dimension on the angle. This is gonna do the other angle. And then what we're gonna to have to do is simply put this in here and we can start cutting these and they should come out perfect. So we'll go ahead and set that up. You always want to make sure if you're going to do this and you're using this as a stop though, make sure you don't have that all the way in here because you can bind 
this within the fence. I've got it back in front of the fence or the blade so that it won't bind. That's just using it as a stop. So that's the safe of that. We're going to go ahead and see if we can run this thing through and make it work. <laughs> Okay, so what I did is I've cut, yeah, I forgot about that. I needed a bunch more than that. I think it came out to 52 of these little things uh, in order to make it all because, as you see here, they need to be fit nice and tight together. So that's what we're going to do. Once we get them all tight together, we'll glue them down to the base and make them go at it. But we got to stain every other one a different color and put those together. Uh, and we're also going to add the background. In order to do the center, this portion, looks like we're going to need to figure out when we get that set up and done, we'll figure out how wide we want this and just cut another piece here and stain it uh, the same color as the insides of this, which would be this portion here. So that's going to be this portion. We're just going to make them all the same, just like that. I think that'll work out. And then the end down here will be a half of one, so we'll have to probably make this one I, I think was not a full one so that should work anyways we're gonna we're gonna make that work I think we're gonna go ahead and uh, try to get them all set up make sure I've got enough of them figure out how many I got to stain and we'll find me a couple different colors of stain and see how it looks when I get them stained okay so I've taken and sanded all my little triangles up and we've put a coat of stain on them and I've kind of laid them out a little bit so you can kind of see what's going on. What I ended up using, if you like that combination, a uh, little bit of Minwax. I don't know if you can read that or not. Special Walnut. That was my dark color. And then for my lighter color, uh, another Minwax product, and that's Puritan Pine. So that would give us our two different colors of our board. I think they are matching up pretty good. And then we're just going to use the natural look of the uh, oak paneling. I've set these in here, they're just loosely laid right now. We cut a little space here, an inch and a half runner down through the center, which kind of gives us that extra space. So then our overall total on here is approximately 12 and a little bit better. And like I said, I wanted the overall to be about 12, so that means if I glue it to this, I'm thinking glue it to this back piece of paneling. And then I've put this piece in here as a center point because I'm gonna end up cutting this square here and here, and I wanna make sure that was good uh, when we get all done, but I wanna make sure everything else is squared, and I think that's the best way to get that done when I glue it. On the far end over here, I did cut the one of the triangles in half because this end is going to have, as you recall, the, the uh, opening space of this. So we want to, uh, to stop it and let the paneling go out beyond that. So we're going to start out with this probably glued up right flush like that. We'll glue it up like that and then we'll be able to have this piece left over for our other little board to come up this way and whatever room we have left over here uh, when we determine what size our dice are. So we'll square it up, cut it in half, and we'll have our two halves ready to go. So. We'll go ahead and see if we can glue this up and push all the pieces together and see how it looks then. Okay, we've got these all glued up. Uh, they turned out pretty good. A little bit cracked down through here. I was hoping they would have been a little smoother. Maybe could have taken time to do it, but in the gluing process, it's tough. We had them done there. So what I want to do now is we got to cut each of these sides. And like I say, we wanted to get about five inches worth of, so we'll be able to slide that down. We'll cut this off on table saw, both sides, and then we're going to cut it in the middle, cut it in half, and trim that up so that we have equal spots. And we're gonna leave this back up in this end and on the other end, 
to uh, for our dice and in that area. So we'll set it up on the table saw, cut that up, and get us our two pieces, one for each half. See how that looks. Okay, we've got them cut into equal parts. So there's the two halves. I do have a couple little things. Yeah, I probably could have done a little better on. You can see there's a little bit of gaps here. I'm not real happy with that, but we might be able to fill that in. Just get them smoothed off. And this end, by the time I got down here with all these, didn't work out. So I'm just going to take and put something on here and cut that to make sure that's straight, square. And then we'll work on building the framework around it. So we're just going to do that out of uh, probably some oak. Seems how I have that and it'll kind of go along with the pattern. So I'm going to trim that up and get some lumber together. We'll still have to determine exactly how much of this I really need. And I think what we're going to do for the uh, pucks are taking some, some uh, dowels and just cut those into to little wafers and, and use those and stain them up to, to match the two colors. So we'll do that. But for right now, we'll go ahead and let me, let me trim this end off and, and see what we come up with for some framework around this. Okay, so for progress, we've got them squared up, as I say. So we went ahead and uh, I did take a little bit of wood filler and filled in these gaps. That makes it look a little bit better. I think that'll finish off. Uh, then I took and cut some half inch by three quarter inch oak. And then I rabbited out a spot for them so that I guess you can see that profile a little bit. And that's going to go right over the top of that. We cut them on 45s uh, just to angle them in. So we'll throw those around the corners. And then this center one here, we're going to set in here. Um, I did end up cutting this end down. So our basic board ended up being, before anything else is added to it, let's see if I can give you a good measurement on this. Uh, ended up being right at 10 inches and this direction was right at 12 inches so that fit right into the plan it kind of come together and then like I say when we get done and we put these all together on here then we'll have the one centerpiece here and within that our little pucks will sit in here like so so we'll cut those off and set them up and that I think we'll handle us just fine. So we're going to go ahead and glue them up. So I went ahead on this one here. I've already got a clamp on this and glued up the one bottom rail, made sure it was good. And then we'll fit each one of them in as, uh, as we can. So to make sure everything fits good, but kind of like to get a little bit of a start on it, make sure it's going to work. So that's our progress. We'll go ahead and glue all these frames up and show you what it looks like then. Okay, so what I've done is I did set up my uh, little dowel and I've cut them all into little pieces. I think they ended up being just a little over a quarter of an inch. And they're just wide enough that they'll fit in my, uh, my shelf, so you'll need to look at that. And then uh, we've stained this set of them dark. And I was going to stain the other ones light to match the board, but uh, when I went to do the polyurethane on them, they kind of turn dark all by themselves. So I just left mine alone. So that'll be my light ones versus my dark ones. And I think that'll be enough contrast to, to be able to do it. And then uh, over here on this board, I've got them all sanded down. I've put a couple of little dividers in here to hold the dice. And then the uh, rest of them will fit in this part here. So what we're going to do now is uh, we still need to buy the hinge to go between the two of them. Actually, it'll be on this edge and this edge. This is set up the other way around. Um, so we'll go ahead and, and get those two set up. And then uh, we'll go ahead and start putting some polyurethane on there, and then we'll attach the hinge to it and a little latch. But uh, now we're just coating everything with clear polyurethane, and let's see what she looks like when we're done. Okay, we've got the things all polyurethaned up. And I've added a couple of small hinges on here, just little uh, one inch hinges. And now we're going to have maybe another handle on there. We'll see, but uh, it's all polyurethaned up. And that's what our pieces look like in contrast. So 
I think it's a playable board for sure. Like I said, I might end up adding uh, little handles on here, and I think what I'm going to end up doing is buying some little magnets to set in here, inset there to hold it closed. But uh, we'll see what happens there. But I think that's going to work out just fine. So that's the uh, backgammon board. Hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, yeah need any help with it give me a holler but uh i'll give you some <laughs> some ideas of what i run across while i'm there anyways hopefully uh you can take it from there and we'll catch you on the next project we've got that in the works already so we'll we'll get that one out there pretty soon too i believe so we'll catch you on the next one please like subscribe and add any comments you have to it i always enjoy reading your comments and feedback thank you much